We're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. And of course, I asked a question uh, before we went on the break. If you, at any time, had been stuck at an airport somewhere in Nigeria, probably because of a delayed flight or cancelled flight. Um, that, that is not all. We, now we have uh, a, a flights that are not delayed or cancelled, but they are moved forward. So you're supposed to travel at 10 a.m. And then that morning, you get an email from the airline saying the flight is now by 9 a.m. It's happened to me, and the airline did not re refund me. I didn't get my money back. But I'm sure, I hope our guests this morning will be able to tell me how to get my money back, because that money is still hanging. Uh, Olumide Ohunayo is the Assistant General Secretary, uh, Secretary General, rather, of the Aviation Safety Roundtable. He's an aviation sector expert and analyst. Uh, Mr. Ohunayo, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, before we come to you, let's quickly just inform our viewers that the menace of, uh, of flights, you know, being delayed in the country has been a constant fixture uh, in Nigeria's aviation sector. Like we said, uh, almost every frequent flyer has had a taste of it. And most times, the traveler is left, like I said earlier, to bear, you know, the, the consequences uh, of this. And uh, there's no form of compensation from neither the airline nor assistance from the, the aviation sector uh, regulators and authorities. Now, the delay comes in different forms, like we said, uh, but it also quite bizarrely airlines leave earlier than scheduled. Now, that's on a whole different level. The question being asked by all is, what are the rights of the passenger amidst all of this? What are the responsibilities of the airlines in all of these? Can the airlines be blamed for any of this? You know, and what's the way forward? Now, the airline operators of Nigeria has re had recently attributed what they say or measures 80% of flight delays and cancellations in Nigeria to factors that are not under the control of the airlines. I'm hoping I guess we will uh, uh, you know, uh, approve or dispute, dispute this. But he's saying that, uh, or they're saying, uh, through the uh, president of the airline operators of Nigeria, Dr. Abdul uh, Munaf uh, Yanusa San Sarina, uh, he's saying that some uh, of the prevalent causes of delays and cancellations included the unavailability uh, and rising cost of jet A1. He says 80% of the causes of delays and cancellations are due to factors that are not under the control of airlines. Uh, airlines are operating in Nigeria, he says, uh, are forced to operate in an environment that is wrought with uh, infrastructure deficiencies that are highly disruptive to normal shadow reliability and on-time performance. Um, uh, Olumide Ohunai, do you agree with the uh, view of the, um, the the president of AON? Well, to, to some extent, uh, I, I would agree with him. And on another level, I look at him as a, well, you cannot keep uh, complaining when you can uh, come together. If you come together and demand for subsidies and uh, and then support during COVID, then you should demand, you should come together and demand for the for reduction in the causes of delay. Uh, because you are, the airlines are having bad reputation. If you look at the statistics published by NCA early this year, you can see that um, the best was Ibom Air, that was about uh, 30, 30, that had about 30 percent of its flight delay. All others were having about 60 to 70 something percent of flight delay by, on, 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 on the uh, published uh, figure. And I think uh, that's indicting enough. Uh, if, if one of them, uh, despite all her 28 percent, are you having 78? Then there will be something wrong within the airlines that they need to adjust to. All right, well, what other factors are responsible for this? I mean, can the airlines be take any blame uh, for, for any of this at all? Yeah, they have come out with, uh, with uh, some of the reasons for, for the delay, uh, listed among others. Where they talked about you mentioned the aviation for a saga. They've talked about uh, the uh, for currency exchange, uh, the exchange rate, which made, made it impossible for them to assess dollars, to get spares for, for aircraft, uh, aircraft and for maintenance, so that, them, that means some of the aircraft have to, have to be parked or, or delayed. They talked about the cost of clearance of um, uh, aviation equipment when they come into the country, to, especially when they have, in case of an AOG, AOG is aircraft on ground, and you need to replace uh, something that can urgently, and this express are ordered, and they get to Nigeria within 24 hours, and it takes another one week for them to clear uh, such uh, uh, equipment out of the airport premises, uh, out of the customs uh, facility. Uh, they've talked about that. They also talked about uh, <laughs> the inflationary rates, uh, the presidential movements. They talked about the airport facility, uh, 
that uh, they don't have the, uh, the passenger process at the airport. At times, uh, for the early morning flights, there's always that delay at the security place uh, through the checks and um, when they have only one one lane open and the passenger would have to go on that queue. At times, um, and the, I, I think the most significant one for me that is not within that control is that of the uh, Lagos apron park. Apron park. Apron here is where the aircrafts are parked, and because of the space. Uh, I alluded to both MM1 and GAT, the two terminals we use in Lagos. And knowing that Lagos is the hub, uh, they cannot take all the aircraft. So some aircraft would have to pack and wait for other aircraft to leave uh, the bay before they can go and pack. And that also contributes to, to a lot of delay. And you know, once, once, once you start the Lagos leg with delay, it, it's um, it just uh, um, metaphors to all, all the rest, you know. And, um, and that's what has been happening because you find out that the, the one living from Lagos go to Abuja from uh, Abuja, we, he goes to uh, Enugu or, or uh, Makodi or wherever, uh, another city, and comes back to that city, but come back. All right, uh, uh, Olumide, network has interfered with, with your uh, connection. I do not know if you can hear me. Uh, but from the last point you're making, it seems like apart from uh, the airlines, the regulatory authorities also have uh, some constraints that are uh, leading to the delays and flight cancellations. Zulumide, are you there? Can you hear me, please? All right. It, it's quite a worrying situation. We'll try our very best to get back to uh, Olumide Hunayo as soon as possible. But it's made some very important points. Uh, we apologize for the... Uh, the quality of the audio there, but he's made some very important uh, and interesting points um, about, for instance, the size of the apron. Uh, Mr. Hunayo, please, can you kindly uh, probably disconnect your, your earpiece and then probably use your, uh, your device naturally because there seems to be some audio interference so that we can hear you clearly um, because a lot of what you said was really difficult to make out. So if you can just kindly disconnect you know, your, your, your earpiece and then just use your audio device normally. Uh, that may help. Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you very well. Um, okay. Oh. Yes. So bef before we lost, we, we lost the connection with you, you were making a very, very interesting point. So I'd like you to just go over it again. Okay, I, I said the uh, I, I said the most problem for me was what the one has to do with the airport where the aircrafts are parked. Uh, I, you know, Lagos being the hub of domestic travel, almost all the airlines use Lagos. They, they don't start in Lagos; they have um, all, um, almost half of their flights into Lagos. And because, because Lagos is the hub, they, they spring from Lagos to Abuja, from Abuja continue to other cities. So once the one in Lagos uh, is delayed, which is the hub, it cascades into the rest of the schedule for the day. And 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 the and the, the, the hub for Lagos. Two terminals used are the MM, MM2 and the GAT. Those two terminals have, have complained seriously, uh, seriously about the apron and not being big enough to contain aircraft for service, especially for the early morning departures that they all leave about that 7 o'clock. And I think that's an area they need to address. It's either we work on expanding the apron or we, 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 we spread the flight departure time so that if you lose your own slot of departure, the next the next uh, airline would, would, would take it and you would have to leave. I think that that's also will help uh, with adjusting and reducing this... Uh, Delay. Uh, like I said, uh, the, uh, in all of this, for, for the passenger, myself, and every other person, all we want to do is get to the airport and take a flight. So, what, or whatever problem is that's within the industry, it's for the industry players, including the airlines themselves, to sit down and resolve it with the government so they can stop the, 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 the delays. All right. Uh, looking at this whole issue of the size of the apron and all that, and please, there's some breeze blowing your way. Probably that's inter uh, interfering with the sound. But uh, if you can maybe turn it off. But, but, this issue of, of the apron, we hear, we know that the federal government has embarked on, you know, massive reconstruction and uh, uh, renovation, even building new terminals across the country. We all know what was happening probably in a place like Port Harcourt, where for months, if not years, because of the renovation of the Port Harcourt Depot, we had to use a, a, a canopy, you know, canopy. Um, it's been reconstructed. We can see what's happening. What's happened at uh, 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 Motala Mohammed Airport? We have a new terminal there. In you know, uh, we look at the Abuja Airport. The tarmac was re renovated or reconstructed. With all these constructions and reconstructions going on, why are we having these technical issues? You talked about the size of the apron, for instance, at the airport. Why? Why was I fast on the canopy? <laughs> 
<laughs> you will have Kalibi at a stage that when you are innovating, yeah. that, that keep you in the rain. But anyway, you, know, you remember that Kalibi was a bad state for us. That made that the, the, that airport was named the worst air, airport terminal in the world because of that canopy. It was a very bad, uh, bad uh, image that Nigeria got from that canopy situation. And I'm happy you've raised it again to our consciousness to see why we should. Uh, uh, know that aviation is not domestic, aviation is not Nigeria, aviation is global, and the whole world is watching and seeing what you are doing. Um, uh, it, look, looking at what you have analyzed, uh, I, I think a, a major problem is our inability to follow the master plan of the airport. When you do not follow the master plan of the airport, you run into this kind of problem, or into all of this problem, and find yourself either demolishing, um, uh, re rearranging, or reassessing, rebuilding, and costing you more money. And and also not improving. If you look at the new terminal at the International Airport today, they are they are they are going, they are going to demolish the uh, AIB uh, headquarters there uh, at the airport and some other facilities international airports. As of today, all the major airlines have refused to move into that new terminal because of the size of the apron. The aircraft cannot use that airport. The apron, the process is small, so they've not been able to go there. So it's only small airlines of. Um, our airpiece that, that are operating from there. But the bigger, the bigger ones, the, the British Airways, Lufthansa, have refused to move into the new terminal. Seeing that the, the airport is a beautiful terminal for the passengers. But the, for the passengers to get into the terminal, that is so beautiful. Then the airport, the, the aircraft will be able to park uh, them safely and uh, uh, comfortably for the for the both airline uh, or airline crew, the airline the aircraft asset itself, and for the passengers. So that's because of that situation, that terminal is not being used. So I think we, we need to go. We need to go back to the airport plan and follow it um, uh, religiously, so that we don't uh, get a seven to this last minute just come uh, repairs and demolition and uh, and reactivation, reactivation and certification thing. Very, very, very interesting, and uh, one wonders how we can have a, a whole ministry. You know, in some countries, you, know, you have just one department for aviation. Uh, a whole ministry for aviation, and this kind of mistake will happen. I, I don't know uh, how that happens. But w how, how should these issues of flight delays and cancellations, rescheduling, you know, that negatively affects the passengers be, be resolved? In, in times past, we've had passengers, you know, having no choice, according to them, but to resort to destroying airline equipment. You know, there's a recent case of Max Air, uh, where some passengers went after their staff. Um, the staff, I think, may manage to have escaped, but the computer reservation systems did not uh, escape. Um, <laughs> you know, so, so how, can, how can these uh, this, this be resolved? What, what remedy, what options do passengers have in such a situation? Well, um um, your, your question is two to one now. Uh, when, but, but I would advise the passengers not to destroy the uh, property or attack uh, personnel of the airline because of, but at, the, at the point of doing that, you have turned the table uh, and that becomes uh, a civil case and you cannot be prosecuted for uh, uh, the civil disturbance, civil disturbance, uh, destruction, or even the bodily injury to a personnel. So I, do, I would not advise any form of violence. Uh, normally, there's, there's, there's a process. If that process fails, uh, there are two options. It's either you write to the NCA uh, uh, the, um, to, to seek redress. The Consumer Protection Council uh, also is there for you to write to. And you also have the issue of taking up, taking, taking, asking your lawyer to take up the case. You, you see, we call the poor judicial process in the country they just really want to test the, uh, the, the uh, potency of the judiciary. And if we, if, we, if we do that, if we are patient to do that, you find that the airlines will also sit up. But then they see the concurrent judgments coming in from uh, uh, the lane passengers and the amounts that have been asked to pay. But by, by and large, uh, going to your question, um, uh, looking at uh, what are the things to, to, to be done, uh, let me go to the there are, there are, there are fines in place and the penalties. What what it what it says that if uh, if if it should be two to three hours delay, you serve uh, snacks, and if it's late at night and they cannot go back, you provide accommodation uh, for them overnight, which which is the one that the domestic airlines always run from. Rather, you see that our passengers are sleeping at the terminal at the airport. Then, if if the if you can if, if the flight is further delayed more than three four hours, then the uh, the passenger has a right to seek refund for his for, for his ticket or ask for for the, uh, the ticket to be scheduled to another date of his choice without paying any penalty. Now, where does the regulator step in? That's the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. For me, I don't like them finding the airlines before. 
uh, payments uh, before their responsibility to the, to the uh, passengers. I would want them to first stand on the passengers being paid uh, or giving a, a new ticket or refunding them. It is when the, the airlines refuse to do this, then they come in with the fine. They, 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 they now hit them hard with the fine. It's, without, it's not a fine I want them to now use to take the money away and pay to those passengers. That's what I want to see now. So the passengers will not just lose them. Now the airline did not pay them. You now find them and they still get their money. So if they, if they refuse to pay at a certain time, let the uh, let, let the airline to come in then, find them, and after finding them, pay the passengers uh, what, what is due to them. Again, from, uh, I would advise that we begin to work on how to improve the facilitation process at a, at, at a domestic airport. Most importantly, that of Lagos, because uh, due to this uh, apron uh, size that is causing delay, and uh, by which we, uh, some, of, some, some of the time, these passengers are actually come down out of the plan, by a terminal and bust where the aircraft is. We need to make that faster. Again, if you look at the, secu the security clearance to get into the to get into the uh, departure lounge in the morning, there's always a long queue. Uh, but I, I, I think MM2 should do something about about expanding that uh, that uh, that security clearance at uh, uh, frustration uh, point. So we can have about two or three points, and that can improve the flow of passengers without delay. Then the airlines, most importantly, we have asked them to go into alliance. This alliance and partnership means that if I have a flight and I have an issue, I can easily I can easily ask my passengers to board the next Abuja flight rather than um, sit down and wait for a flight that is not operating. But this alliance, uh, they've launched the Spring Alliance. About four of them. Uh, all, all, uh, up to today, I am not sure how effective they've been able to use that alliance to to, to um, uh, take this uh, take this pain of passengers. I know that now before I went before uh, before I stopped flying, how did, that can uh, that deal with Ibom Air? Whereby if if one of their flights is delayed, they put them on uh, Ibom Air. And you see, the, the two other, the two have to work together because they know they have good uh, the departure timing. So if you don't have a good departure timing, you won't be able to work well in an alliance. And more and, and lastly. The, I think the NCA should make it as a point of duty uh, to publish every month flight statistics. This includes the delay, cancellation. Publish for everybody to see. Maybe if, if you all see that and passengers begin to see flights that are delayed, the one that, that has more delay, and they don't buy them, everybody will sit up. I think that's also more important. That's also very important to have. All right, all right. We, we, I wish you had more time to go into all of uh, the de details as far as the uh, rights of the passengers are concerned. I mean, we, we've suffered, we've suffered. I, I think I've lost track of how much the airlines are owing me from, you know, especially the ones that bring the flight forward. And then you have to rush from international terminal to domestic terminal because you, you booked the flight the same day. So what I learned was not to book my connecting flight the same day when coming back to the country because you might miss it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a sad situation. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, Mr. Lumide Ohunayo, we are grateful to have you every single time. Your expert analysis, as always, is highly appreciated. Thank you for having me. All right, and uh, that's the size of our package. Quite interesting conversations we've had this morning. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with more on The Breakfast, but please rem remember that you can follow us on social media uh, uh, platforms, uh, Plus TV Africa on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and of course on YouTube. You can follow us and uh, follow us also at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle on YouTube for uh, engaging content from our programs. My name is Kofi Bartels from myself and on behalf of the entire team we have the cameraman, the production crew and the producer Osare will return tomorrow. Good morning.